Okay, welcome to our uh, companion lecture where we're going to use R in order to really analyze data. So this is the companion lecture to uh, how to model data with curves. And so I'm going to assume that you've already installed R, you know how to open R, and you watched my first video on how to use R. And uh, we're just going to focus on some new techniques today. So let me tell you that um, the data we're going to use, the same as we did when we were drawing the lines by hand, is the car data, horsepower, miles per gallon, price. And I wanted to let you know if you are playing along at home that you have this data if you've installed R. And so I encourage you, start R and do everything along with me here. It's the best way to learn. Uh, so you already have this data, and R includes a lot of data sets. To see what data sets are included, uh, just type data, open close parentheses. We'll list the data sets with a brief description that are available. So look through those uh, on your own time. Now, you're not going to see the car data yet, uh, although it's there. I need to introduce you to the idea of a package or a, a library. They go by both names in R. And a library or a package is like an add-in for Excel or an add-in to a web browser or a library or, or um, toolbox in uh, some programs. And it gives it added functionality. And most of these include data sets as well. And um, sometimes you need to download packages from the web. And if you do, we don't have to for the data. I'm just going to show you this. Uh, this library is included in standard versions of R. Um, but if, if you needed a library or a package that wasn't installed by default, you'd go to Packages, Install Packages, select a mirror near you. I like the USA California ones since I'm in USA. And the California locations seem to be complete. They have all the packages and quick. And so that brings up a list of the hundreds of packages that add additional functionality and data sets that you can download. And a lot of these are very useful for different situations. And we're going to download some of those later, but I'm just going to cancel that right now because we don't need to download it. Uh, the library we're going to use is called MASS. Uh, so to load it, library, capital M-A-S-S, -S, in parentheses. And that loads the library, and now if you do data, open, close parentheses, you'll see the list of the same data sets as before, but at the bottom, a new list of data sets that are included in the math library or package. So they use both of those terms interchangeably in R. And CARS93 is the one we need to load, capital C CARS93. Uh, so... Um, Let's attach the data set. Now we can attach it that we have uh, loaded that library. Cars 93. And now that we've attached it, we want to do a summary so that we can see the names of the variables and make sure that uh, we understand what the data looks like and that it looks correct to us. So like, let me just do this one more time. Uh, since summary is a very common command, I always have a shortcut. You only have to do this once after you install R. Um, so we don't have to type the whole word. Let me just show you how to do it. S equals summary. And that will tell R when you see the letter S. Don't make me type the whole word, summary. So we'll do S, cars, 93. And it shows us a list of the variables. Uh, frequency distributions, as we saw before, eight Chevys, eight Fords. For qualitative variables, and minimums, means, max, min, uh, quartiles, median for um, quantitative variables. Uh, the variable names are slightly different than in the first uh, R lecture because uh, in the mass package they're just named slightly differently than they were in my Excel. So AVP, average price of a vehicle with the average number of options, you know, uh, is just called price in this data set. And horsepower in my data set was HP, but here it's spelled out as horsepower. Now the other variable that we looked at uh, when we were modeling curves was miles per gallon P. 
period city capital MPG period small city and so let's look at those variables uh, just like we did when we were modeling them by hand but let's see what R tells us those slopes and y-intercepts will be but often what I'll want to do first is just look at a plot I can't overestimate the importance of looking at your data and so the way I created those plots uh, on the handout that we were looking at in these lectures uh, for number two is just the command plot and if you just want to use a linear variables without doing anything fancy to them just do horsepower on the X and mpg dot city on the Y so horse power comma mpg dot city and a new window opens that shows us this scatter plot of this relationship and you can see that it's the curve now one difference between this plot and the ones that we were looking at when you're drawing a line by hand is these do not start at zero on the y and x axes let me show you how to do that let's hit the red x and close this out I'm gonna hit the up arrow so I don't have to type the whole thing again and after the mpg.city I'm just gonna add an option there are many options you can use when you make plots one is to change the x limit xlim equals and then you're gonna show it a short list using C the combine function is the way I think about it 0 comma 300 since the highest car had a 300 horsepower so the X limits are between 0 and 300 on the x-axis Y lim Y limits equals C 0 comma and the highest price car was around 60 so I'll make this 65 on the y-axis for the limits and again we get a new plot window and now we can see uh, that they go all the way down to zero so if you wanted to do a plot with logs it's very easy in R to do this let me just hit the up arrow and um, I'm going to hit it twice because I don't want to mess with the X and Y limits here since I, I want to do this fairly quickly. We could do the log of horsepower just by typing log horsepower. And to be clear, LOG is natural log in R, whereas on most calculators, LOG is log base 10. And when the plot window comes up, you can see that the... Uh, horsepower is now in natural log terms and miles per gallon in the city is not and you can take the log of both of them if you want or one or the other just as we saw in the last lecture and you can modify the limits uh, so that they're easy to draw lines through but now that we've looked at a couple of plots let's run regressions that's really the meat and potatoes uh, let's do car dot reg two equals to give the regression results a name so we can look at them lm dependent variable mpg dot city that's what we're trying to explain tilde horsepower and hit enter to see the results to a summary s car dot reg two and it tells us that the y-intercept of the line the best line is 32.75 and the slope is minus 0.07 meaning that for each additional horsepower your miles per gallon will drop by about 0.07 miles per gallon now to do a model with logs hit the up arrow give it a new name reg 3 and let's just take the log of the dependent variable for example log mpg city put that in parentheses and hit enter and do a summary and we can see that for this model the y-intercept 3.52 the slope minus 0 0.003 this means that for each additional horsepower it will decrease the miles per gallon by 0.3 percent since the dependent variable is in log terms now let's just do one more keep 
keep doing all the variations and make sure you can interpret what the slope and the y-intercepts mean, but particularly the slopes, not so much the y-intercepts. Uh, since I'm running short on time here, I'm not going to do any more of these. Uh, let me show you how to close R and save your. make sure you save your work. Hit the red X and it's going to ask you if you want to save your workspace image. Say yes. And then what will happen is R will save an R data file that has the data and the regression results that you ran and an R history file, which is a text document that includes all the commands that you just typed. And you can look at that in any kind of text editor or Microsoft Word and you can look at all the commands that you just ran in the future in case you forget how you did something.